Okay, so, hi. Um, I did a face reveal as well. Um, so this is my boot camp experience. I joined the Navy and went to boot camp September 28th, 2021. Uh, that was back when COVID was still around, so there was doing ROM. ROM does not exist right now. Right now. Um, I spent two weeks, which is essentially ROM is restriction of movement, and you sit in a ship in the barracks doing absolutely nothing. Not allowed to uh, do any push-ups, not allowed to do any form of training, unless if you got RCs that are cool and sit there and be like, hey, this is how you make your rack, this is how you fold some stuff. If anything, that's the most you can do. I, uh, when I joined, it was all female divisions, so I had to also wait for female division. That's why I spent two weeks in ROM. I'm gonna stop moving around. That's like, okay. So obviously you can, I don't know if you can see, but there's marks on my arm. I uh, just took my blouse off because it's Florida, it's hot outside, so, um, that, that's what sleeves are rolled. Um, uh, I started out in a all-female division. Um, I will say one thing, the go-fasters, not the best thing, the, the little black tennis shoes that they give you, they're some of the worst pair of tennis shoes in the world. Um, the boots, they killed my feet, um, I'm actually wearing the boots right now though because they're, they're co finally comfortable, I got them fully broken in, I have arch supports in, that's a long story that I'll be telling, I will be telling the story. Um, so I tend to ramble, but this is how I gather my thoughts and how I get things put out there. I got time right now. Um, I basically don't have duty right now, and liver doesn't start until 13, and who yeah, watch qualifications. So, around, so I was in all female division, eight week boot camp. Around week two of boot camp, so you have P day week, week one, week two. And then I had two weeks for ROM. So week two is probably about five weeks into boot camp. Um, <clears throat> so P days was whenever when we get, it got issued our boots. Um, I noticed a lot of problems. A lot of people say don't go to medical. Um, try to stick it out as long as you can. Uh, my personal experience. Um, if you notice that something is wrong, go to medical. They cannot deny you medical. Now, if you want to refuse treatment, you can refuse treatment. If they tell you you have to get treatment, I highly recommend you get treatment because then there's a possibility where they can you can go back out there, you can get very seriously injured, and ask you, well, did you get treated for this? You say no, boom, it's on you. Um, but you can always deny treatment if you don't want to do something. Um, I went in because I had leg issues. My legs hurt a lot. Even when I'd be laying down and resting, my legs would be hurting. I had uh, numb toes. Um, I went in they first said, your muscles are very tight, drink more water, which I'm not the best hydrator. I'm gonna be honest, um, they gave me some icy hot essentially, it's muscle pain relief cream, and 
and said, here, do these stretches on your own time. I did that stuff. It was really hard to be able to get the time because it's week one, we're doing all kinds of shit, trying to get things done so that we can actually get on with training. But I go back because something's not right. Uh, did a 15 minute sustained run and found out that I could not run. Uh, after about a lap. So 12 laps is the one and a half mile. We did 15 minute sustained run and I probably did six laps. Um, lap two, lap three was whenever my legs would not work properly. I had a lot of pain. Um, I was going to go to the medical that day and I said, no, wait, I'm going to go on a boot day because I'm pretty sure it's probably my boots that are killing my feet. Maybe if I can get like arch supports put in them, maybe it'll be good. Uh, I go in the next day, medical schedules me appointment with SMART. I go to SMART the next day, SMART schedules me appointment, uh, they get me the, the, the arch supports in my boots and schedule me to go get a bone scan. Friday, that Friday I go to FHCC, which is a hospital, go get a bone scan done. They said it should be ready by that afternoon. I'd be able to go back to medical. So I waited at medical for a little while because they said that this stuff was ready. My doctor wasn't ready yet. I waited a whole weekend. And so this is October. I waited a whole weekend for to be able to go see my doctor. Uh, went in on Monday. Monday I got both good news and bad news. Monday was November 1st. Uh, good news was that I had no stress fractures, no shin splints in my legs. The bad news was that I had a stress fracture in my right foot. So that is what made me going from graduating December 10th to being a boot camp for seven months. Um, I had my personal shoes. I got to get my personal shoes on my data box. So if you can, and you get to keep, and they, they, right now they're keeping their data boxes there because of COVID. Um, make sure that when you dep in, or not dep in, when you go and get on the bus to, or the plane, whatever, when you actually go to Great Lakes, bring your personal shoes. Bring good running shoes. Shoes that you like to weight lift, run, track event, hurl, bike, I don't know, whatever you want to do with them. As long as they're good, like Asics, Under Armour, some kind of top quality sports shoe brand that's a running shoe. They'll let you wear those. Um, so I got to get my personal shoes out of my box. So as the one person that had blue shoes, bright blue shoes. Um, and that day I was put on crutches, went to RCU, and spent November 1st all the way through to February 16th in RCU. Spent a month on crutches, um, and that whole time doing rehab. Um, had MRI done, and my stress fracture was gone. Then spent a lot of time working on running. Working on running, because I struggled with running before coming in, but at least I could, before joining, I was able to run. So I was a Bravo female. I am a Bravo female. Uh, my run time for the mile and a half is a, this is bugging me, is a 15-15 for the mile and a half. That's the max time I can do. Whenever I start running, the best time that I had before running an OPSA, before before going back to a division, 
was a 17 five somewhere around 17 minutes and a mile and a half okay um so 17 minutes for a mile and a half which is something that i would have been able to work on uh because the rdc assessment would have been 1645 and i couldn't shave off time in the four sustained runs that i've had before rdc assessment going back to week two so went from eight week to ten week ten week integrated divisions so going from all female divisions to integrated divisions all male and integrated divisions because not a lot of females join the military obviously that's a big reason why um So I, week one and week two, well, there were two tech threes I left. So week one, P days in week one is where you're doing paperwork. A lot of paperwork. Uh, recommend knowing your social security number, recommend knowing your uh, bank information. Um, if you don't have a bank, you can make you can get with Navy Federal. Um, Navy Federal is a little bit better. You can go with the Armed Forces Bank, but they're hardly ever open. They don't have a lot of locations. Um, and actually, I got Navy Federal linked up with my home bank right now. So it's really easy. It's really simple. Um, but yeah, I recommend Navy Federal if you're joining the Navy. Um, they're very... They're very, very nice people. Very nice. So in week one is when you'll do your banking, getting your, P days is when you'll do direct, pro P days or week one is when you'll do direct deposit stuff. It's when you do all your bank information, when you get to get in with a bank. If you don't have a bank or if you want to get a new bank, um, which you have your option between Navy Federal and Allied, or the, you, the other one that starts in the, it's Armed Forces Bank, Armed Forces Bank. Um, I'm going to try to give as much information as I can because there's people that have questions, but I can't give a lot of information. That's one thing. There's a lot of confidential stuff. Um, I joined as an E3, so I've been paid seven months as an E3 and continued on, um, my rate is AS. There's not a lot of people that join AS. Um, I'm in aviation, so I'm in Pensacola, Florida right now. It's really nice. Um, past three days, and around 10 o'clock in the morning, I get to watch the Blue Angels practice. It's very loud. They fly right over my barracks. It's really cool. I'm off on a sidetrack. I'm sorry. <clears throat> For people that want information. Week two, honestly, I don't remember half the shit that we did in week two, or week three. I know I spent a lot of time looking forward to doing the firefighting classes and doing live fire and doing Marlin Spike and battle stations. That was fun, a lot of fun. Fun fact, Battle Stations is actually built by the company um, that did all the rides at Universal Studios. So Battle Stations is technically a Navy exclusive Universal Studios attraction. Who yeah. You get 10 weeks of tr safety training to be able to ride Battle Stations. Um, but no, that's... RDC assessment, so what you do is you... Uh, to pass RDC assessment, you add on a minute and a half, and that's your passing time. But I want to shoot for OPFA assessment. 
So if you're alpha male, 12 minutes for the for the mile and a half. If you're uh, alpha female, it's a 14, 45 mile and a half. If you're bravo female, it's a 15, 15. I think the Charlie female is a 16, 30 or 16, 45. And it goes on from there. Um, Um, when I ran my RDC assessment, I had to run it twice because, um, I struggled. That's going to happen a lot. When you're in A school, that's going to happen a lot. You're going to hear bing, did 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 blah, 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 blah. They all go on something. Um. It's not bad though, because you can probably just like leave the ship. Just don't don't do anything. Um, boot camp and A school are two different things, very different things. Uh, boot camp, I highly recommend, except everything that's happening. If you're getting IT'd for something. And you have no idea what happened because you're new to the division, because you got asthma into the division and you have no idea what happened, and the whole division is getting divisional ITE'd. Just just roll with it. Don't fight it. Push push your hardest. Do whatever you want. Just don't get shitty RPOC like I did. I had a shitty ass RPOC. Um, you can vote for RPOC and AROC. Don't let RDCs pick someone because they have more bootcamp experience. So she got asthma on P days to that division. She was an RC with me for about a week because she did shit on her paperwork. She lied on her paperwork. Somehow she still made it in though. Shitty ass RPOC, a dumbass. Yeah. Um, Enough with me being angry at my RPOC because she was bad, very bad. She she caused my division, my, my, my group to have a team hit the battle stations. It was like a five out. Um, but no. So I got spinny chair. All the chairs in here are spinny chairs, so I'm like swinging back and forth. Um Where was I? Yeah, so RDC assessment. The first time I ran RDC assessment, I did it in 17 something. I think it was like 17.30. So I had to take off like almost a whole minute from my first run time for RDC assessment time. Now, first RDC assessment, if you're good, um, everyone that runs RDC assessment, there's a week of offload week, recruit offload week. Uh, you wear tennis shoes for the whole week, um, no running, <laughs> you're just doing PT regen the whole time, if you do any PT, no, no mods, no strength training, you're basically doing stretching. Um, that's a really cool the minute we got off offload week, I ran my REC assessment the second time, and I passed it in a 1639. So barely passed, but I passed. Um, push ups and planks, easy, easy, easy money, easy money. Um, If you don't pay attention to time and you just breathe for the planks, you can probably max that plank in no time. Cause I know I did, I did a minute 45 plank and I couldn't do a plank before I joined. Um, push-ups, I started with push-ups and bravo female max push-up, bravo female requirements for push-ups is 17. Alpha female is 20, 
uh, alpha male is like 50. Um, I can do 25, 26 push-ups. Could do 25, 26 push-ups uh, on my urgency assessment and my PFA, my OPFA. Um, that's that's a thing. Um, RDC assessment and OPFA, they were actually run by red caps. Um, your RDCs are there. Do not go to them for anything. Uh, you go to a person in red ball cap. There are also be people in white ball caps. And those are all corpsmen. They're medical staff. They're there for your safety. They're all there for your safety. So you don't have to worry. Um, there's a thing called a train timeout. You raise your right arm and you like this and you have this. Yeah. Train timeout. That's things that you'll learn. Um, with low visibility train timeouts, that's a different thing. Um, someone calls a train timeout low visibility, like everyone crouches down except for the person that called a train timeout. Um, and therefore, the instructor will come through, have their arm out, and they'll walk along until they hit someone. And then they know that the person that uh, needs assistance is right in front of that person. Um, let me think, 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 think. So with PFA, they call it during timeout. Um, you keep running. Uh, unless if they call over the announcement speak the speaker system uh, training timeout track one training timeout at ease whatever something like that it means that basically that that whole uh, PFA is gonna be paused probably everyone has to retake it um, divisional problems you are amazing thing um, we waxed our decks in our compartment, right after we waxed our decks in the compartment, like the day after um, FQA came through, we got Bravo Zulu for our really shiny floors. You can get a Bravo Zulu for drill tests, drill inspections, or drill three. We got a Bravo inspection, Bravo Zulu, because you held really shiny boots. Learn how to shine your boots, learn how to shine your shoes. Get them as shiny as you possibly can before any inspection. If you're an RPOC, Make sure everyone gets their boots as shiny as they can before any inspection will get you a Bravo Zulu, which will get you better points towards Battle E. Uh, my division, Division 141, um, was the original contender for Battle E. We lost our star flag, so we had to get a Bravo Zulu, a compartment Bravo Zulu to get our star flag back. Um, And then, so everyone in ship three, so I was in ship 13, everyone in ship three, the whole ship three lost their uh, athletics flag, but our flag scores didn't get posted till later because one division had a OPFA discrepancy where they had like seven people fail their OPFA, an all male division failed OPFA because of the Jaguar system. And I'm just like, no. It's like discrepancies don't really exist. But, you know, whatever. Um, we would have had Bally. We had the highest scores. Um, maybe not all the highest scores, but we had, we had all our flags and we had some very high scores. Despite being a shitty division, because we're a shitty division, but you know, whatever. Um, badly is a thing, and there is a it, it is a thing for uh, graduation to not have a badly division. With integrated divisions, so you'll have female house and male house. Female house, in my case, female house is the main house. The male house could be the main house too. It depends on your first RDC. Um, when we would integrate, we would all move over to the main house. Now in my case, the female house, the projector didn't work in the main house, in the female house. So when we had to do something, a class 
where we were gonna, it was an in-house class and we'd have to use a projector. We'd all integrate over to the mail house, but for inspections, yeah, for inspections, the mail house would integrate over into the female house. Um, those of you in grade divisions, if you have males watching this or females watching this, males, make sure you shave. And there's actually one inspection where even if you have a shave chip, you will shave. Females, make sure your males shave. Uh, your third personal inspection, you have two hours before, before the inspector comes in, before FQA comes in. Um, and those two hours, You'll put on your dress uniform, dress blues or dress whites. It depends on which one you're graduating in. I was dress blues um, for this season. If you're joining right now in April, May, um, you're probably wearing dress whites. You have two hours, two hours to get your hair perfect, whatever, you, whatever you're doing. Make sure you have no gear drift, no Irish pennants, no nothing on your uniforms. Um, get a lint roller. Get a lint roller and lint roll your uniforms. Uh, don't worry about tying that neckerchief. Tie it, but you'll have to untie it. You have you will get be given 30 seconds to untie a neckerchief and then two minutes to retie it. Everybody should have a giant tie and chief. But probably make a different video just for tying and chief. It's really easy. Um probably do it right before I do a dress fine inspection. No, no. I'm not wearing uniform. No in videos. No uniforms in videos. Nah. Um but yeah, so that's how that goes. Um, see, firefighting, that's something. You'll have three classes on firefighting. You'll have firefighting one. You got gas chamber. Gas chamber's fun, spicier, very spicier. Very spicy. And then you'll have uh, firefighting applications. Um, my instructor is really cool. He'd like to say something. It's like, this may or may not be in a very big event, <clears throat> battle stations. You know, you, you, you might get a good instructor. Um, my, my instructor for firefighting was a, an HT who had been in the Navy for 20 years as an HT. He knew his shit. He was planning on retiring. He's like, yeah, my last tour, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, he's like, can I go here? Can I go there? He's like, nope, you're gonna be instructing at Great Lakes. Okay. Um, so, it's, it's, boot camp is where you make it to be. In all honesty, it's what you make it out to be. If you think that boot camp is gonna suck and it's gonna be awful and you're gonna have the worst experience ever and you're just try gonna try to get through and get out and graduate and go somewhere else, then boot camp is gonna suck and it's gonna be awful and you may or may not graduate depending on how much you fight. If you go in thinking this is this is the future for me. Have a positive attitude. Think to yourself that you can do this. Um, that it's just one more test. Um, that's why I did. I told myself just one more lap. So I started with running. Test, no problem. Just one more lap. Just one more lap. Just gotta do one more lap. Um, 
So really just say it's like just one more day. Keep keep positive like really think positive. Take it day by day or chow by chow. Sometimes it's the only thing you really look forward to is chow. Um, which the food sucks. I'm not gonna lie. Ship 13, the food sucked. Ship 4, food was actually pretty okay. I was in ship 4, ship 2, ship 2, 8 at ship 4, and then ship 15. Food sucks. The food sucks. I mean, it's not bad. But if you are a very picky eater and you like peanut butter and jelly, you're afraid to have peanut butter and jelly for about three meals a day and cereal. Um. Chapel services are pretty good. Um, they have Catholic, Jewish, Muslim, um, nature spirituality, which is pagan, their version of pagan, um, Seventh-day Adventist, and a couple others, and then Protestant service, which is Protestant service. It's just a slew of Christian all intermingled and it's okay. Um, yeah, but if you're religious or if you're not religious, attending chapel on Sundays, um, that's during your holiday routine, but attending chapel on your Sundays might actually help you keep sane might help you keep sane attending chapel on Sundays. Um, or Friday night, Friday night services too. Um, the days will go by fast and slow. The week will go by fast, the days will go by slow. Um, like, in all honesty, I still can't believe I graduated just last week, it's Friday. I literally graduated like a week ago. Um, yeah. Um, I'm lucky I don't have a roommate, so. Um, Be prepared to clean your compartment, clean compartment, about three times a day. It'll be an hour clean apiece. Especially if you do bleach protocol. Bleach protocol is always an hour and cleaned within certain specifications. Um, if you can get on head crew, get on head crew. Head crew is actually pretty chill. At least where I was. And like all the divisions that were in head crews, chill. So I just clean toilets and sinks and mirrors. It's not that bad. Um, laundry crew will clean out dryer lids and make sure the washers are clean and dried. And dried. If they see water spots in there, it's a hit. Dust empty racks. Make sure racks are made. Um, you get two sheets. The sheets do not fit the beds. Unless if you're lucky, you get long sheets. Sheets will not fit the beds all the way. Um, you lay one up down on, on the head end first, and then you do the, the foot end of your rack. Your heads are always opposite of each other. So you have one rack, that top rack will be head on this end, the bottom rack over here will be head on that end. <laughs> Top rack head will be over here, bottom rack head over there. Um, so this rack, so I can see this rack my window. This rack, you'll start with a sheet on this end. And you'll tuck it under, grab the edge, 
knife hand along the mattress, pull under, tuck under, hand out, you'll have a perfect 45 degree angle. You're welcome. Let's trick that on somebody else here. Um, do that for all four corners. And then the checkpoint notebook. Put that one in here. I don't have a checkpoint notebook in here. I don't know if I had a checkpoint notebook in here though. Can I have three pages? Okay. Um, one thing that you'll need. Um, so you can you should do this in boot camp. It's a thing called a cat card. You use it to get on to the computers. There's a thing called the DoD Cyber Awareness. It's actually a Cyber Awareness Challenge. You need this. You can you can't print it off in boot camp, but you need that when you get into A school. So go to um, the computer lab at A school almost immediately when you can. If you can't get a yeoman tour, get a yeoman tour. My yeoman's gonna do yeoman tour, so you know, that's, that's, that's sad. Um, but I kind of, this space is probably about five miles. It's not. It's about three miles from here to the front gate. Um, it's about an hour and a half walk to the museum on base. An hour walk, an hour walk, it's two and a half miles. Um, but find yourself a, the, the computer lab, get online, you can open up that, uh, the cyber awareness and print it off. Print off two copies. Yes, two copies. One will go into your folder, into your record. The other one, you keep on yourself. Keep on yourself. You'll put in a thing called an I Love Reminder. An I, I Love Me Binder. Or folder, whatever you want to call it. But it's an I Love Me thing. You put down every single you put every single qualification you have every single volunteer hour you get everything possible in there that'll help you rank up that'll help you go from e3 to e4 that'll help you when you go from e6 to e7 that'll help you with chief exam the review board so immediately start working on I love me binder um, in a school you can get volunteer hours you can volunteer with food kitchens you can volunteer with the museum as long as you get something in writing say you volunteer for so many hours uh, donating blood that will go in I, I love me binder so if you can donate blood donate blood do everything you can you will have the advance if you're going to join and you get through Navy life is not for everyone. Military life is not for everyone. Oh, it's like we're all created a created equal, and then some join the military. Um, now. You can join out of high school, it's no problem. You can join after getting your associate's degree, no problem. You can join with a bachelor's degree, no problem. You can join with a doctorate. Now I don't know why you join with a doctorate, because you probably have a better paying job than I do. And you're not being thrown all over the world like I will be. But 
I mean, life is life. If you want to join, go ahead, try to join. Get, like, get your foot in the door. Talk to the recruiters. Make sure you have good recruits. I had good recruiters. Just go by all the branches. You don't have to join the Navy, but Navy boot camp is different from Air Force boot camp, different from Army boot camp. They're different from Marine boot camp. But just always do your research. Before you join, do your research. Find out about the rates. That's why I did. That's why I got. Um, I had a list of about five rates that I wanted to do that I had done a lot of research into. I knew some of the rates because my brother was in. I knew I did not want to become a corpsman because I wanted to be able to get good advancement. I wanted to become an officer. Um, didn't want to do HT because my brother's an HT and he hates his job. Um, and then I looked at stuff that was either intelligence or aviation. It does not matter what rate you have. You can be an aviation rate. If you want to become a nurse as an officer, an officer as a nurse, just get your bachelor's degree. Doesn't have to be in anything. Now, if you want to get a nursing degree, you can. There's, there's, um, all kinds of programs that they have here to help uh, with tuition, tuition assistance, TA. Um, <coughs> um, I joined as an EMT. I joined with an EMT license, nationally certified, had everything I needed to go paramedic. And yeah, I'm doing aviation because I remember that I love flying airplanes. I chose an aviation rate because I could talk to pretty much every single officer that I've talked to in boot camp and here is a pilot. My chaplains were pilots. So if you can, like you can request to speak with an officer who works in something that you want to do. Have a lot of respect for them. Be respectful. Um, use don't lose your military bearing. Unless it's a chaplain, then you can like cry because they're really chill. Um, but talk like if you can ask questions, and you can get with the instructor and ask them any question. Ask questions. Always ask questions. Um, you never know what you can learn from your rate. Now, if you're a nuke, and you're going on submarines, don't ask an AM or an AO or anybody in aviation rate what submarine life is like. There was a guy in my division that did that to my AM. He looked at him and said, I'm not going in something that's designed to sink. That's sick. Now that person didn't call there. I'm in trouble today. Okay. Um, yeah, just... Like, be smart. Be smart about it. If you're going aviation, ask someone that has an aviation rate. An AM, a PR, an AO, an AS, um, an AD, AV, any, any of those. Any of those. Like, You can ask them, what's it like on an aircraft carrier? Oh, yes, it's like this. Or they'll say, never been on an aircraft carrier, I've only been squadrons. Then you'll be like, well, what's it like in squadrons? Because you don't know where you're going. You do not know where you're going. If you didn't get your orders yet, 
you will have no idea where you're going. All you know is that you're going to be going to A school. My order said A school. Another girl who order said A school and then California or Norfolk or San Antonio, Texas or uh, something. Like, like you don't know where you're going. I'm gonna be honest. You're gonna join. You're gonna know where you're going for boot camp. Uh, if you do your research, you'll know where you're gonna be going for A school. But aside from that, you will not know where you're going until you get your orders. And if your A school is over like two weeks long, more than two weeks, more than a month long, you're not going to get your orders until you're done with A school. So like my orders, I'm here. I'd like to go to Japan, but you know, put me, put me on the, the USS George Washington, please. Um, yeah, but really, before you join, please, 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 do your research into your rates. If you know what rates you're going to be able to get, do your research into what your rate does. If you know what your rate does and where they work, do your research into the ships or the areas that they work on. Whatever whatever you can get information on before you even join, get as much information as possible. Because that can get you if you, if you go in with a purpose and you're like you're excited for learning and you're open to learning, you, you will, uh, you'll make it through boot camp. Go on with an open mindset. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Do not be afraid to ask questions. Never, ever, ever be afraid to ask questions. Um, pretty sure I probably look like a fucking buff as shit, but you know. Also, girls that have long hair, it takes you a long time to get your hair done in the morning or you don't like using hair ties in your hair get it cut I highly recommend getting it cut professionally before you join and do it about a month before you're supposed to leave out because you never know if you're gonna have hair shock when I first got it cut, of course it was a little bit longer on the top. My hair got messed up in boot camp because it just started my hair started shortening on its own. I had a lot of stress. Um but no, just give yourself a nice fade. Females. Males, you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna go in, you're gonna become bald. That's just it. You're gonna you're gonna join, you're gonna do initial haircut. And you're not gonna have hair. That's how it is. That's how it always has been. Sorry, break the news. Um, I'm gonna give it to you guys straight. That's how it is. My pet officers gave it to us straight. I love them so much. They're my favorite petty officers ever. They said, We will never lie to you. We'll give you the information that we can give you as soon as we know about it. I went from having to wear masks all the time to being told, hey, after you finish this day in training, you don't have to wear masks anymore, unless if you're not vaccinated, not fully vaccinated. We finished our mom and spike test, it was like in week four. Yeah, in week four, we finished mom and spike. Day after mom and spike, finished mom and spike. Our pay officers were informed, looked and was like, oh, we don't have to wear masks anymore. And it's like, does that mean us too? They're like, no, recruits don't have to wear masks, it's just staff. Next day, recruits don't have to wear masks. After a certain day of training. All of us, whoop, pocket. So, even though you don't have to wear masks, um, masks will stay in your front right pocket at all times. At all times. 
there's a specific way to fold chits. It's the same way that you fold your blankets. Um, I'll do the thing. I'll show how to fold chits. I'll show how to fold your tiger neckerchiefs. That's that'll be its own thing because I'm coming up to it like an hour on this thing. Um, so, to be honest. If you think it's gonna suck, boot camp's gonna suck. If you think it's gonna be awesome, boot camp's gonna be awesome. The food will suck. Eat fruits. Eat the fruits. The fruits are not bad unless they're frozen and rock hard or turn into mush. Pay attention to the labels on the food that they give you. They'll be red, yellow, green, yellow, red. Green is the healthy option, yellow is the moderate option, the red is the bad option. On the menus, they will actually have nutrition facts on the boards. That unhealthy option will have a higher protein and lower fat content than the unhealthy option. For more reasons, that unhealthy option will have a higher protein content than the healthy option. The only reason why it's an unhealthy option is because it probably has a lot of salt in it. Um, there's not very many vegetarian or vegan options, I'm sorry about that. They're, they, they can't change it. Um, all goods well staff, um, there are people that have mental disorders. Um, and this is their chance of being able to actually work a job and make a living and be out there in the world. Uh, be very respectful and kind to the Blue Bowl staff. I don't care if you think they're retarded. I mean, I don't care if you think they're weird, that they look at you while you're eating their food, or that they shout weird things. I don't care. Do what you to respect. You will not talk bad about Blue, Blue Bowl workers. Because that will get your division in trouble. You'll probably end up getting IT if they find out that it was you. So, don't do that. Uh, so, okay, okay. Here's my boot camp rules. My boot camp rules. My boot camp rules. Rule one. Go with a positive mind attitude. Go with a positive mindset. Rule two, take in everything. Do not fight any of your training. You are meant to be mentally broke. Now, to avoid being broke, accept it. Accept everything. Be open-minded. Everything that you knew or everything that you thought you knew, it's wrong. It's all wrong. You thought you knew how to make a bed? No, that's wrong. Redo it. You thought you knew how to fold clothes? That's wrong. Redo it. <sighs> Rule number three. Be respectful to all staff members. Be respectful to all staff members. Be respectful to all staff members. Goodwill workers, your petty officers, your chiefs, the COs, which you're not gonna really see the officers that option that often, but you know. You might. But the reason why I say this four times now, be respectful to all staff members, because the Goodwill workers. Always say good morning to them, good afternoon, good evening. Be courteous, be respectful. Help them. Uh, don't throw shit on the floor. Clean up after yourselves. Clean up after yourselves. Uh, yes, they do have to clean the tables afterwards, and yes, they do clean the galley afterwards, 
the thing is that there used to be a time when there was no staff. There was no galley staff. The recruits did all that shit. The recruits prepped the meals. The recruits cleaned the galley. There was a time. Not too long ago. And they can go back to it. So, I say again. Rule number three. Be respectful to all staff members. <clears throat> Rule four. I'm gonna quote Petty Officer. Don't do fuck fuck shit. Don't do dumb shit. You're gonna be given the CO's top six. You're gonna be given the MCO's four core attributes. You're gonna be given the Navy core values. Understand where they are. CNO's top six. There's six rules. You violate one of those, you go to captain's mast. Don't do dumb shit. Don't do fuck fuck shit. Now, no recruits for recruit contact. That's more for don't build relationships. Don't high five in front of your petty officers. Don't high five in front of some of these group groups that like to snitch because people like to snitch. People like to see other people get in trouble. People like to see other people get hurt. Don't do fuck fuck shit. Now, females, yes, we, we do have a little hair braiding sessions in the head after taps or during holiday routine or sometimes during morning routine when there's nobody there. Yes, we will do that. If you get your hair braided by someone else or your hair gets done by someone else, and petty officer or chief or senior chief or master chief or someone in your chain of command asks you who did your hair you say you did your hair and usually there will be someone there that has seen you do your hair before they know you can do your hair pretty much like that or you never show them that you do your hair. You have someone that's right in the head or the person that's helping you do your hair. And they'll say, yeah, I saw her do her own hair. Get accountability. Even here in A school, accountability. Um, so, boot camp and A school are different. I'll make a different video on A-School. I learned a lot just from being at A-School for a week. Don't worry. Do your research. And you'll be fine. Trust but verify. And uh, that's it, that's that for me. That's all I've got. Um, if you have any questions, I'll probably put a video of how nice the base is here. Maybe, I'm not sure if I can actually video base, but I'll see about something. I'll probably cut this whole section out anyway, so, you know. Thank you so much for watching my video. If you have any further questions, do not hesitate to reach out. Um, I might not be able to answer all your questions. Um, recruiters can answer a lot of questions. Be careful though, they have quotas to fill. So say you want information, that you want to do research, let them know you're not ready to join yet, but you're wanting to know what you can do. But with that, we wish you all a very good day. Um, enjoy the sunshine, wherever you get it. 
taking my stops and all the roses. And this is Shanto Grima, aka Bear, signing off. Bye.